Hi, welcome back to my channel. My name is Amy Newman and I'm 19 years old. So I'm going to be doing like a mini series, I think. Hopefully it helps. Uh, so in this video, I'm going to be talking about applying to drama school, what's the difference between drama school and university, all that kind of stuff. Next video, I'll be talking about preparing your monologues, songs, working through them, how to analyse them. And that will just be from my own experience. Again, I haven't had training from a BA acting course. So, you know, take these videos as as you like. And then the final video will be talking about what happens if you don't get them. Uh, you know, gap year maybe. What can you do with that year? So, yeah, let's get right into this video. So... If you've auditioned for several years, this video probably won't help because I'm going to be talking about the very basics, things that I wish I would have been told when I first applied to drama school because I didn't know anything about drama school. I didn't know what drama school was, literally, at all. So yeah, so this video is going to be more, this series will be focused a bit more towards the acting degree. However, you know, carry on watching it or just look in the description because I, I will be listing websites, books, plays, uh, things that I want to recommend, I will be listening in the description. So just go check that out. So the first thing you want to do is research the drama schools. So first basic thing is, what are the drama schools in the UK? So there's a few websites that you can go on. The first one is, if you just type in on Google, the Federation of Drama Schools, it should come up with a list of, I don't even know how many there are, 20 I think something like that uh, to list a few Lippa, Rada, Lambda, Guildhall, Mountview all of them and write them all down all of them uh, another one to go on is CDMT and they're accredited drama schools so once you've got the list down I don't actually know how many is on there let's say there's 15 drama schools on there those are the ones that have been accredited now they aren't the only good ones in the UK they're the ones that everyone knows and people would probably recommend them. But if you type in on Google, drama schools in the UK, it will come up with those. But if you keep on searching, they'll be coming up with, for instance, Fourth Monkey. Uh, it's a two year degree course and they're a theatre company. You know, that is a drama school. Less known, but it might be good for you. So the next thing you need to do is write down what you're actually interested in. And by that, I mean... Obviously, it's going to be related to um, acting theatre, but what are you actually interested in? Are you interested in directing, uh, screenwriting, producing, lighting, costume and design, makeup, musical theatre, acting, dance, uh, teaching? What are you interested in? And, you know, like for me personally, I would put musical theatre and acting. Now I know that I don't want to do musical theatre. But if you are still a bit like, oh, I don't know whether to do dance or musical theatre, oh, I don't know, write it down. And then once you've got that, go on all the drama schools that you have on your list and you need to go on their website. Now, there's a thing called a prospectus. I think I'm saying that right. Basically just an online a version of their website. It's got everything from the introduction. So how the school, um, who created the school, when was it built, da da, da. Um, And... Personally, I don't like looking at stuff online. I would rather have a hand, you know, like a printed copy. So order them. They're free. You just email them or you just follow, um, you know, do a form or whatever. There are some drama schools. I think Oxford School of Drama, they don't do printed versions. They only do the online version. But get them all and read it all. And the introduction probably is one of the main points. You want to write down things like um, who created it, when was the drama school built is it partnered up with a different university is it going to be partnered up with a different university um and the founder do a bit of research on them what have they been in or what were they you know what had they been in has the drama school been recently built you know all those kind of things will be really key information for example if it's been built in the past 10 years and you know the facilities are nice they're good if it's partnered at the university, that can already give you um, an idea that it's probably got funding. And then the more you delve into it, they might um, talk about location, funding, um, statistics. So things like how many people graduate um, with, how many graduates within a year get an agent. 
stuff like that should already be on their website but it might also be in that you know in the prospects so after that you should maybe um you know for example if you are only looking at drama schools in manchester then all the ones in london bristol whatever wales scotland you can cross them all out and you only have to look at the schools in manchester and vice versa for london so at that point you should start to you know you might you might still have the whole list you might like all the schools and what they're starting to offer um or you might have halved it already so the next bit the next bit you need to look at is the most important the most important bit ever the alumni now the alumni is basically people who have studied there um from all of the courses that they really offer unless you go on like the ba acting grads at RADA then obviously it'll just be the graduates from the BA acting degree, um, degree course so the alumni is so important so for me the way I found the alumni was I just typed in shows that I liked that I'd watch so for example um, Sex Education is a very popular UK show it's on Netflix um, everyone's British or you know they've got British ac they've got a British accent so I just assumed they were from Britain and I typed in the cast and I just saw where they went so two people in the cast actually went to East 15 which I didn't even know that someone went to RADA, Italia Conti where was the other one? Um, Oxford School of Drama and just from that you know like I've got quite a few actors that I like in that and I can go right they went to RADA that's interesting another one Benadorm UK show you got Peaky Blinders uh, and you got to think not everyone in the show that you're watching went to drama school but you're only going to find that out if you do more research a good one is Umbrella Academy you have Tom Hopper who plays Luther he went to Rose Bruford you've got Lila who is played by Aria Ara I don't know I don't know how to say it no Rita something she went to Oxford School of Drama basically and again, you'd only find that out if you did your research. So spend, I would say, about an hour or two. Or every time you wake up in the morning and, and you're like, oh, God, I've just got some time to waste. Just look up some of your shows. Trust me, I've got it on my phone. I've got a list of all the schools that I'm applying to and I've done my research. And I was going to apply to Drama Studio London. And because now I've started to look at the alumni, I can't actually find any alumni that I really enjoy that went to that school. So automatically, you, sh you should be thinking, right, should I even really apply to that school if I don't like anyone from there? So that's another thing. What next? Yeah, so I'm going to talk about... Right, so at that point you should probably have a smaller list. Now, depending on your budget and depending on how long you've been auditioning for, uh, will depend on how many schools you apply for. So a common question that I think a lot of people always wonder is how many schools should I apply to? If you, like I said, if you are struggling for funding and it's your first year applying and you're like, to be honest, I don't really know if drama school's right for me, I would pick five places. I think the minimal place that you should apply for is probably five. I think that gives you a nice range. You can do it all over the UK then. Again, location, if you're based up in Scotland, you really aren't going to want to do ten auditions all down here in, you know, London, Manchester, because that's just going to be so much travel. So think about it really do think about it and in the following year if you don't get in that year following year you can go right didn't like rada i haven't tried lambda i'll try that one and that's what i'll be doing i did a few i did a lot of schools this year that i didn't like um for my own personal reasons uh that i won't obviously be doing next year but next year i'll be doing schools that i've never gone to before so i don't know whether i will like it basic the thing is when you do research it's you can make a judgment you can make you know already form ideas of the school you can look at where it's located google map it um go on google images and see what it looks like watch youtube videos but until you actually go there you can't make a solid decision and that is what preparation is 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 about uh it's about not wasting your money on places that you know you're just not interested in if you don't want to study in birmingham don't audition at rural birmingham conservatoire just don't so yeah so you should have a list again over time when you speak to people so for example i'm going to east 15 in october i might speak to someone one of the teachers who went to 
um, a school that I am not auditioning at and they might really recommend it and I might look into it and I might go, right, that school I actually really like, I'm going to add that to my list. So the list can always increase or decrease, but for now you should have a, a rough idea of where you want to go. Next is when do you audition? That's such a common question, like, and I always think it, you know, like, when should I audition? So most drama schools and universities audition between September through to the following June or July. Now it's totally up to you. Seriously, do not depend it on anyone else or any other thing. If you are not ready, do not audition in October, November, December time. It does not matter if you uh, are really late to it and it's your first year auditioning and you're like, right, I've just started a course in September. I'm not going to be ready until March. Don't apply until really late. Now, the thing with that is UCAS Conservatoire in normal UCAS, you have to apply by a deadline, which is the 15th of Jan. And some schools, they give you a date. So if you apply before the 15th of Jan or on the 15th of January, you might get an audition by Feb. So you have got to think about that. And that's that's also going to think about, do you want to audition for that school? Do you only want to audition for schools that you can choose the date? Think about that as well. So it really just depends up to you. We got told by someone who went to Bristol Old Vic Theatre School, and he's also on the panel. He said, the optimal time probably is between January and March. But like I just said, if you're not ready, do not audition in that period. Do not matter. It doesn't matter what you're going to think, oh, the panel, mm, they might not like me because I've auditioned two weeks after the recommended time. It doesn't matter. But if you, for me, I, I audition between January and February. Um, no, January to March, that's when I usually audition. But yeah, so why should you audition for drama schools and not universities? So a lot of people, and for myself included, I thought drama school, you couldn't get funding. Drama school, it's only for the... Um, insanely talented people who have been training their whole life they've you know done short films they've been in you know extra things and all this and that that's not the case don't get me wrong drama school is so flipping hard to get into no matter where you audition compared to university but the reason that is is because those drama schools you have connections at the end of it you really do when you go into an audition later on in life a professional audition sometimes they can just look if they have so many auditions they're going to automatically look at the people and where they went to if you went to a normal university and studied acting or literature english literature they're going to think eh, we'll have a look at the rada grad first that might not be for everyone but that's kind of what i've been told and it does technically make sense if you think about it um even though it's not right but but the thing is, like, you might go to a university, you might, you might just might fall in love with it, and that's amazing. And there are people out there who are very successful and they went to a university, but connections-wise and the hours you get in a week at drama school tend to be better because you get a showcase. That's another thing you've got to look out for as well. You want to make sure that by the end of the three years, you're going to get an agent. You need an agent, really, to do professional work or to do a lot of it. And one way of doing that is doing a showcase now a lot of the schools in london will then obviously do a showcase in london schools that aren't in london you need to make sure now this is key that they do a showcase in london so for example royal welsh college of music and drama i know that they do a showcase in london but they also do one in cardiff where it where it's at i'm not sure about um royal scottish conservatoire um but yeah you need to make sure that is key and that also will bring down your list. You'll go, right, they aren't going to offer me a showcase in London. Don't want to audition. So, yeah, I'm just trying to think of anything else. So I've got a few books and a few things I want to recommend to you. Now, this preparation really just depends on when you're starting the preparation. For me personally, right now, I'm making this video during coronavirus. And it is August 2020. I, like I said, I'll be auditioning in January. So I've got a lot of time. And I've been preparing... I've already kind of know what drama schools I want to audition at. It'll be my third year auditioning, so I already have a rough idea of where I like and where I don't like, what suits me and what doesn't suit me. Again, like I just said, it's not a set list. This list could increase, it could decrease. So think about that. If you are watching this video and it's October and you're hoping to audition in January, um, you just need to speed it along. 
like I said, maybe do less places, maybe just pick five places. Uh, again, if you're an international student, you've got to think about that as well. Bristol Old Vic, their BA acting course, they don't do international on that BA acting course, I don't think. Um, but again, you're only going to find that out if you get the prospects, prospectus or if you go on their website or if you talk to people. Um, contact someone, find them on Instagram and just say, hi, I don't. I hope you don't mind me asking. It's literally what I did the other day. I found someone who's going to Oxford School of Drama and I just messaged her on Instagram. I said, hi, I don't I hope you don't mind, but... Can you tell me a bit about the funding? Is it, um, can you get a lot of funding, all this and that? And she was lovely, she replied back. So if you don't have teachers who are, who have been to all these posh schools and all these big schools, don't worry, just find someone on Instagram or whatever and just message them. Um, so I've got a few books that I want to recommend. First one, which I would highly recommend this. I read this within like three days. I devoured it <laughs> and it is so you want to go to drama school by helen freeman so this is basically a guide to drama school i'm not even joking so it talks about the difference between drama school and university if you are thinking of doing musical theater this book is still good it's like 85 percent towards acting the rest towards musical theater so keep that in mind but again it's incredible so she works or is on the panel at gsa and her son goes to drama school so she's been through the viewpoint of auditioning people but also also uh, also her son has been through that process so she's got a very good you know subjective and objective point really to drama school so it talks about um deciding what school's right for you um researching and selecting those drama schools so again it recommends the in, um, website that I've, I've kind of said to you uh, but the most important thing is with this book is it gives you loads of exercises to do so if, I will be taking this book with me every time I audition and if you've watched my Guildhall School of Music and Drama audition you would know that I waited about three hours I would have loved this book and I would have just gone through it and gone right okay let me just go to the corner of the room and let me just do a few exercises that literally you can just do sitting on a chair um that would just help you relax. This cost, oh, it's a tenner here, but I swear I got it like for a fiver off um, Amazon. Amazing, highly recommend. Next one that I don't, you don't need this, but I think it's a really nice touch, especially if you want to um, keep a record. And if you, this is more for so a few months before you audition, not necessarily months and months before, but it is the drama school audition life. So it's a company um, called The Lovely Diaries. They, um, she went to Central School of Speech and Drama and she did the acting degree course. And it's basically a journal for auditioning. Um, go on their website, they're really nice. And the book is really good. This costs like 12 quid, I think. And it's the soft cover. They have a hard cover as well. And it basically has a few recommendations for monologues. It has um, a space for you to put your classical and contemporary. It then carries on it gives you a lot of advice as well um for example here it goes um the methods of stanislavski so once you've picked your monologue you can then answer all these questions on here and it all oh, the most important thing on here probably is it gives you loads of potential questions that drama schools could ask you so i would also recommend start to prepare in that you don't want it to be scripted at the end of the day you just don't you don't want to come across as fake but if you're someone who like for example if I ask you the question, why do you want to act? You can just kind of think, like, you know why you want to act, but you can't put it into words. Or well, that's for me anyway. And I just kind of think, well, I, I like to act. Mm. But I want to say so much more. And so having those questions kind of very lightly planned out, and I mean very lightly, just a few ideas here and there can really help you out. So this video is already way too long. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm just trying to think... Or also think about, do they offer you accommodation? That's another thing you've got to think. So hopefully this video starts to help you prepare. It's never too early to prepare for drama school. Again, like I said, if you're 16 and you're planning to audition at 18, start looking at schools now. If you live down London, maybe go to um, the open days. Also have a look at the graduate um, shows. P personally, I can't do that because obviously Corona this year and also... Um, I don't live in London. I would like to do one, I really would. And that can also give you an indication whether you like the school or not. I think that's a really good way of doing it if you're on like, your fourth year of auditioning. 
or your third year old audition in and you've really got it down to the five top scores of your choice. So yeah, I'm just trying to think of anything else. No? Well, I hope you enjoyed this video and I'm going to leave in a few links down below. So go check it out and yeah, see ya.